Do you have any questions about the movie? The spectators? Do you understand why we're out here? Try, try to explain. Try because, to explain. Because the banks in this country have taken over the government um, solidly. We no longer have a democracy. The media is a joke. It entertains and distracts us. The unemployment rate, the real unemployment rate in America, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the U6 rate, which is the broadest gauge, is officially 23 to 25 percent. So one out of four people are basically unemployed, working part time. The uh, education system is being chopped apart. I have a son, he's two and a half. Just in the last two years, the entire city has cut off its education calendar by 12 days, seven days last year, and five days this year. That's to preserve the salaries and the positions of the administrators and the teachers. They're sacrificing the, fu the future of the youth of this country. The debt, the public debt, debt they've leveraged the, the government's debt to bail out the private sector. Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Bank of America, all these banks should have gone under in 2007, 2008, but they didn't. They were bailed out by the American taxpayers by tripling the debt from $3 trillion to $9 trillion in less than three years. These wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, Pakistan, in Syria, Libya, we recognize that these wars have a lot to do with the creation of profits for these banks whether it's through debt issuance by the government or through the foreign resources that we're taking over. We recognize that a lot of these governments are proxy states for the, the empire that the United Kingdom and the United States have put together. That Obama is basically a figurehead, a puppet, that Goldman Sachs and the Rockefellers put in power to maintain the integrity of this system. But the system has no integrity. At all levels, the judicial system, the political system, the educational system, it's a joke, it's a farce. You know, the top 1% in America used to own about 18% of the national wealth less than 25 years ago. Today, the top 1% own, own, between, own between 40 and 42% of the national wealth. And if you're talking about the financial wealth, the top 1% own 56% of the national wealth in the United States. This is all documentable. You can go online and just Google the, the wealth distribution in the United States. The healthcare system here is one for the wealthy. Um, people have no jobs. They have leaders who only serve the interests of the, the only ownership class. The people who, who run the government basically are the one who own real estate. This city here, Los Angeles, the downtown real estate developers built up this Ponzi scheme and it collapsed. And now the city hall is basically going to bail them out. They're going to build a football stadium that's going to cost over a billion dollars at least, or say maybe as too, much as two billion dollars. This is when the city has a $400 million operating deficit. So their solution is to create two years of temporary jobs for about 10,000 people so that they can get reelected. And what's the solution? It's a football stadium to keep us entertained. They don't care about the fact that all the jobs in this country have gone to China, have gone to Mexico, that the edge we are no longer producing anything in the United States. They've created a nation of people who are entertained and distracted all the time and who don't know what's going on with the rest of the world. Let me conclude with this. If you pick up your dollar bill, and I don't have one with me, but if you pick up your dollar bill, I don't have one. Again, but you'll see a pyramid. You know the pyramid on the dollar yeah. bill? Okay, the top of the pyramid is disconnected from the base. That's that's what the United States has become. The United States has become this pyramid eye, 4% of the world's population. It's, it's spending, it's military spending is more than the entire rest of the world combined. This symbol here on the dollar bill was put on the dollar bill in 1934 by Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his vice president, Henry Wallace. Both of them were 33rd degree masons. I don't know if you're familiar with skull and bones and Freemasonry, but much of what's been going on in the, in the world has to do with the architecting of something called a New World Order. And at the pinnacle of the New World Order stands the investment banks in London and in New York. And they run the military, they run the corporations, they own the media, they are dumbing down Americans' education system to keep us entertained and distracted. The dominant topic of news for three weeks in this country was about a congressional representative named Anthony Weider. Wiener and his, his, his Twitter posting. I don't know if you follow that. 
But the news in this country is about Michael Jackson, Tom Cruise, you know, missing people. There's no substantive news. Americans don't know anything about what's going on in Denmark or they probably couldn't find Denmark on a map. They, they, they don't know what's going on in Germany, in Britain, in Japan. You know, everything is out of sight and out of mind. So at the top of the pyramid, they have created a military empire, this eye, that runs the rest of the world. The slave labor circuits have been set up in China, in Mexico, in Nigeria, in the Philippines, in Indonesia. They use these wars against these faux enemies, these, these Muslims, that's the current enemy of, of, of favor, to basically keep, create a military industrial complex and run the world's natural resources and its cheap labor for our benefit. And Americans in the meantime have just been dumbed down, disconnected from the rest of the world, and and most of us are beginning to figure it out because we're we're lied to all the time and we're distracted. And we're here, there are 400 of us here, we're here because we're fed up with being fed up. We're frustrated with the government, these politicians no longer represent us, and we want, we, we have to do what you guys have been doing, we here at least, in Europe, and that is standing for your rights. So. We're fed up with these assholes, these, these warmongers, these bankers. They've taken over our country, they've taken over our, our financial system, and enough is enough. And you know, this is happening globally, and I hope at some level we can build bridges with, with the Danes and with the Europeans, um, because the, the problems are linked. You know, I think in your government you have a parliamentary system. We don't have anything like that here. Maybe we need something like that. Um, so anyway, we're mad as hell yeah. and we're not going to take it anymore. Thank, Thank you. you. Give him it. It's Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is at the root of the problem. You know, this investment bank.